with someone. Are you here to train? Care to train with me? Waving the sword around alone is boring. And I'm tired of crossing swords with worthless opponents. But you seem like a worthy adversary. I don't know for certain, but you seem skilled. I've always been interested in your technique. You learned from the former captain of the Knights of Seros, and traveled Fodlin fighting as a mercenary. On top of that, you wield a hero's relic, the legendary Sword of the Creator. Good sparring partners like you don't grow on trees. But know that I will beat you, and I will surpass your strength. Why? Hmm. I never really thought about that. I learned to thrust a sword before I learned to write my name. Of course, my upbringing wasn't unique. That's how it is for all children in my country. You're no use if you can't swing a sword, however mighty your crest may be. It was the perfect environment for me. I could live free of stodgy values and virtues. Grow strong so you may live, and live to grow stronger. That's what I was taught. Why should I? Nothing's as important as the pursuit of strength. But that's enough idle chatter. Take out your sword. My mind is emptied of all but the thrill of the challenge. It's you. Where I'm going is hardly your business. Do me a favor and mind your own, won't you? <laughs> Ever the professor, aren't you? So, what's your deal? Worried about my well-being? <laughs> That's adorable. I get the sense you're not so hot at assessing people. Just giving you a hard time. Either way, it doesn't matter much to me. There's no slowing me down tonight. I've got important things to attend to right now. Ah, there you go with that nose of yours. It still isn't your business. But it looks like you won't let me leave until I tell you. You'll get your way this time. There's a dispute. Or maybe treachery is the more fitting word. Regardless, a purge is required. I see I've got to spell it all out for you. One of my goons double-crossed the gang. He absconded with his boss's small fortune. My small fortune. And buddied up with another gang. Members of the gang are recognizable by their scorpion tattoos. Suffice it to say, they're not a group you want to tangle with. Despite that, I'm not about to just roll over and play dead on this. So I figured I'd pay them a little visit, have a spot of tea with their boss. Makes sense, you know. Like I'm not aware? <laughs> wow, friend, you clearly underestimate me. I play my cards wisely. I wouldn't play if there wasn't any hope of winning. There you go being adorable again. I don't think that's a good idea, but thanks. Better head off now. I've got people waiting for me just outside of town. See you around. <sighs> what is it you're after? Money? Me? Or are you just looking for someone to kill? You seem adamant, so I'll allow it. Won't hurt to have backup if things go south. I trust you, for now. But I don't know how reliable you actually are. Just so we're clear, you mess with any of my people, I'll slit your throat without hesitation. Got that? We've come such a long way. After all, I was only four years old when we first met. From your perfect memory, Lady Edelgard, I expect nothing short of the utmost precision. Do go on. 
Please don't mock me with such frivolous pranks. I can hardly recall that day. <laughs> Forgive me. I suppose I must have been six at the time. I have no recollection of it. My earliest memory of you is of when you were injured. I recall being scolded most sternly by my father. You are Lady Edelgard's servant, he said. You must protect her with your life. I had no idea. But House Vestra has served House Fressfeld for generations. Given that, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Indeed. After that, I made certain to accompany you wherever you went. That is, until... the incident. Ah, when my uncle, Lord Arundel, defected to the kingdom and took me with him. The sensation of loss that overcame me on that day defies all description. It was as horrific as if I'd lost all my limbs. I left the city in a mad rush to rescue you. My father sent soldiers to capture me. I fought them off for three days, but they did finally manage it. Of course, I was only ten. I never would have reached Ferdiad. I've never heard that story before. So there are things you've never told me. It wasn't important. That's beside the point. I wish to know these things. If there's anything else you're keeping from me, please tell me at once. Respectfully, I decline. Why? It's a simple order. I really must know- Speaking of your orders, there was a task you gave me earlier which I have yet to carry out. Excuse me. Wait just a moment! I just hope he's not hiding anything too worrisome. Training again. You're certainly working hard, Kaspar. <sighs> oh, Edelgard. You scared me. You should have said something. I did, but no matter. What has your training with such intensity? It's never good to neglect one's training, but overdoing it is ill-advised as well. You could already give any student here a battle they wouldn't soon forget. You think so? Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I can't really stop training, though. I gotta get better if I expect to get anywhere in this world. If memory serves, you're the second son of House Burglies, right? That's right. My older brother is the heir, and there are already too many mouths to feed in our family, so I can't count on any support. I pretty much have to make it on my own, you know? I understand. It's difficult being born a noble. Those who inherit everything also inherit great burdens, but the same can be said of those who inherit nothing. What are you talking about? I don't have any troubles. Who cares if I don't inherit anything? It just means I get to cut a path to my own future. You know what your problem is, Edelgard? You always have to make everything about you. Are you picking a fight, Kaspar? Hey, now, come on. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. Always happy to fight, though, if that's what you want. Uh, I have no desire to bicker with you. Good luck with your training. Goodbye. What was that about? I'll never understand her. You're in high spirits today, Dorothea. Yes. I have met someone quite charming recently. I'm hoping we can spend more time together soon. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I wish I had some advice to offer. Alas, I do not. Eh, don't worry too much about it, Aidy. I guess romance isn't really something you're interested in anyway. I'm not completely disinterested. Oh, yeah? Is there someone you have your eye on? Hmm. To be honest, there's nothing resembling romance in my life at present. It's not that I'm disinterested. I'm simply too busy with other endeavors. I have no time to spare for such things. That's not surprising. You're not just any old noble after all. Anyone who has feelings for you... Well, they're in for a pretty complicated life. True, and I can't ignore the possibility that I may have to marry for political purposes. I doubt I'll ever have the opportunity for a passionate romance as long as I live. That's no way to talk. 
You meet the right person and boom, your passion to spare. Could be someone you've just met or someone you've known your whole life. There's no telling how life will go. Something could even spark between the two of us. You and I. Now that is an entertaining thought. If such an exciting future is in store, I look forward to it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> That's awfully sweet of you, Adi. <laughs> Tremble with wonder at the magnificence of my sorcery! Unbelievable! It's simple tea, but somehow it's shining with the colors of the rainbow. And the color's changing as it's being poured. How magical. Of course it's magical. I achieved it through magic. It's a spell of my own design, in fact. Impressed? Is this what you wish to show me? I must admit, I've never seen such a thing. Is it still potable? Is it still potable, she asks. Then I suppose you wouldn't mind taking the first sip. That was amusing, Constance. But out with it. What was that favor you wished to ask of me? It's a small thing regarding my house. I thought your highness might bend some slight effort towards seeing it restored from nothing. I had a feeling that was it. I wish I could help, but you must understand my present circumstances. Yes, yes, I'm aware. All the more reason for you to get in on the ground floor, as it were. My magical might is unrivaled, as I proved to you only moments ago. Surely you can see the obvious benefit in having the sorceress prodigy Constance at your beck and call? I agree that you are remarkable. That is beyond question. But how do you imagine Rainbow Tea will help me to achieve my aim? Uh, well, uh, just imagine the acclaim it will bring you at tea parties. It's a most worthy party trick, yes. But I have no use for such a thing. Well, well, it's not as if that's the only trick up my sleeve. That was merely a sample of my repertoire. I never cease my work in developing new magic. Your Highness is sure to find some of it useful. Constance, there's something important that I would like to talk with you about. Oh, have we not been discussing weighty matters all this time? It's regarding a truth that you and countless generations of House Nouvelle have occulted. Ah, that. If you ever feel like revealing all to me, I'd be happy to talk further. Until then, my apologies, but as the Imperial Princess, there's nothing I can do to help your cause. Please don't misunderstand. As your ally and friend, I'm happy to keep you company. However, you mustn't expect more from me than friendship or battle support. Of course. And now I shall make myself scarce. Good day. Um, Hubert? Yes? I just, um, I wanted to thank you for the other day, you know, when I fainted. Thank you for carrying me back to my room. That was nothing. It saved me effort in the long run. Leaving you there would have just caused even more trouble. I guess that's true. Well, thanks. There, I said it, and now I'm going. Is this why you've been circling me like a vulture for the last several hours? Uh, vultures a bit. Well, yes. Yet you would have fled if I'd approached. It seems you will avoid me at almost any cost. Um, well, that's... You don't need to say it. I know. I'm frightening. I'm told so often. <laughs> Please don't laugh like that! Apologies. I will be mindful not to laugh in your presence from now on. <laughs> the grin of death itself! T terrifying! You think so? Hardly. I'm sorry to have frightened you. No, you're not! It's a trick! You're lulling me into a false sense of security! 
I can't stand it! <laughs> She's a lost cause. That settles that. And don't even think about brawling around here again. Impressive, Caspar. Well done. Hey, Ferdinand, did you see that fight? I saw it from start to finish. Both parties were at fault, disturbing the peace. Then you stepped in and corrected their behavior. You were setting a good example. I am proud to call you my fellow noble. Your fellow noble? I wasn't even thinking about nobility. That had nothing to do with it. Excuse me, nothing? Resolving conflicts among common folk is a duty of the nobles. Is that not what you were doing? I guess so. But it was more like instinct or something. I saw people acting out of line and I had to step in. Ah, you were acting on impulse. You might be better served following moral convictions rather than instincts. Take me for example. I always bear in mind that I am a noble and behave accordingly. The fortunate must help the unfortunate. That is my guiding principle. I never have any idea what you're talking about. If someone's in trouble, you gotta help them out. Simple as that. Hmm. A difference of opinion, you might say. Very well, then. Believe what you will. I will not expend energy trying to change your mind. Maybe all of this noble stuff just isn't for me. Th hey! Don't walk away when I'm talking to you! Bernadetta? If you have a moment, I would like to discuss what happened before. I am not here to hurt you. You need not even open the door. Just listen to me. I don't have to open the door? Is this a truce? Okay, okay, I like truces. Thank you. I would like to apologize for sticking my nose into your business the way I did. I thought you might be unhappy all cooped up in there, and that maybe I could help. But I've had time to reflect on what you said, and I realize I was mistaken. Oh. Um, thanks for caring, but I'm fine, actually. I see that. I suppose that is what I'm trying to say. I should not have pushed you to do something that you did not wish to do. And for me to frighten you like that? That was unbecoming conduct for a noble. Maybe a little bit. Frankly, I am embarrassed by my behavior. I disgraced myself. As for my injury, you need not feel guilty or afraid. The sprain was a result of my own thoughtlessness, not anything you did. I have always strived to be a good person, but I suppose all that striving was for nothing. I have failed in my duty as a noble. Um, Ferdinand? Yes, Bernadetta? I don't really know much about this sort of thing, but you shouldn't say things like that about yourself. It wasn't all your fault, you know. I'm to blame too. I hurt you, and I'm sorry. Really, it is fine. It healed quickly. And it wasn't for nothing, either. I am not so sure. I do like my time alone. Actually, it's more of a need. But you're right. I also need to venture out every once in a while. Maybe if I work as hard as you do, I can try it a little more. Yes, keep working at it. You are already much more outgoing than you used to be. When I mess up, or even when it's just a bad day, it's hard for me to step outside. I'm too scared. But the next day, I try again. Because I know that one mistake doesn't ruin everything. So you're still... I mean, just because you... That doesn't mean... <sighs> I don't know how to put it. But that's how it is. So, um... The end. <laughs> what a graceful end to the conversation. Hey, come on, that was serious. <sighs> At least I got you to laugh. Life is a series of peaks and valleys. Our reunion is, to my mind, the highest of peaks. 
Spoken like one who's never known the lowest of valleys. To think, we were once a pair of blooms, flourishing side by side in the upper echelons of Enbar society. Despite our differing aspirations, I think together we could have taken the mantle of leading the Empire. Tread carefully, Ferdinand. Some part of me clung to hope that you might emerge from the wreckage. I am glad you have. I know that was a difficult time for you. Oh, so you surmised that the single most humiliating event of my life was difficult, did you? It is becoming clear to me that this conversation is a waste of my time. Oh, that was rather brusque. Oh, pardon me if I seem unmannerly in the face of a reminder of all I have lost. My family, my home, my friends, my people, everything. I am all that remains. I... I... I did not intend to offend you, Constance. Then what did you intend? How like the noblest of nobles to be unaware of the suffering one causes? You can't grasp what it is to be a newly minted peasant, can you? That is simply not true. I care about you, and I was attempting to offer some words of comfort. Enough! I need more than words, more than you have offered to provide. Though I am without status now, my spirit is no less noble. It will not do for you to condescend to me in my houseless state. You have my sincerest apologies. That was a grave misstep. I did not mean to come across as condescending. I was merely being careless with my words. As you say, I have never experienced loss at such a staggering magnitude. I cannot imagine the pain you have endured. Indeed, you cannot. I advise against trying. The more you harp on it, the more irritated with you I become. Never shall a day pass that I don't work toward restoring my house and reclaiming my title. You, on the other hand, seem content to remind me that it is lost. Thank you, but I had not forgotten. Constance, please. I see no trace of the boy who made waves with me at balls and embodied the finest in the nobility. This newfound arrogance of yours is a discredit to House Iyer. Stupid brain. Go back to the stupid cloud you came from. I'm soaked. Ach what a pain. Happy? Yikes. You look like you just crawled out of a lake. Here, dry yourself off. And don't just stand there. You'll catch a cold. Come on. I'll make you some tea. Oh, um, okay. Huh. It's been ages since I had a nice cup of tea during a rainstorm. Pretty nice, eh? I don't drink tea very often. It is nice. But what does the rain have to do with anything? Doesn't rain make you want to read a book? Or rather, nap with a book on your lap. Though, I guess I'd like that no matter the weather. But then, if the book is too good, not only will I be unable to sleep, my tea would get cold. That makes brewing it a wasted effort. Ah, and that's why I don't drink tea when it rains. Right. Thanks for clearing that up. And thanks for the cup of tea. Well, I'm pretty much dry now. Gotta say, though, I'm kind of confused. Huh? About what? This just seems way out of character for you. You're so focused on yourself, you've barely ever spoken to me before now. No, oh, good point. The thing is, I'm not cut out for battle. If a fight breaks out, I'm only a liability. It's better for everyone if I keep my distance. What does fighting have to do with... Oh, I get it. You think I'm gonna sigh. I'm just like the others. But if that's true, why are you acting so different? What do you mean? Use your words to make the things in your head make sense to the rest of us. Fine. Here's what's in my head. I don't understand why you're being nice to me. Look around us. Nobody else will even risk coming near me. They're probably afraid you'll sigh, since you looked pretty rough when we came in. Makes sense. Your sighs are disastrous. If I can prevent one with a nice, lazy cup of tea, it's the least I can do. I see. You did it for your own sake. Well, whatever your reasons, 
I'm surprised that you'd even consider doing this for me. Surprised or not, it's no skin off my back. I'll keep doing what I do regardless of anyone's expectations. Think on that. I expected you to be a hazard, but you weren't. No harm, no foul, no need to sigh. If only it were that simple. And that one goes there. Perfect! Oh, hey, Bernadetta. What's going on? Enemy! Enemy's here! We're under attack! Help! Someone! Anyone! Help? I'm the one who came here for help. I guess I'll just take care of it myself. I can't believe I got hurt trying to break up someone else's fight. It's ridiculous. All I do is step in to calm them down, and the next thing you know, they're both at my throat. Hey, you ever been in a fight? Fight? You're challenging me to a duel? No, 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 I can't! I've never fought anyone in all my life! I surrender! You win! Uh, all right. That was easy enough. Not to be rude, but do you ever think that maybe your attitude makes you a little unapproachable? You should try stepping outside and socializing. I'm sure you'd make friends in no time if you didn't waste it all in here. Outside? In no time? Oh, sure, yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Well, maybe it's just not as easy for me as it is for you. Did that ever cross your mind? Why wouldn't it be? Making friends is easy. This one time, I even made friends with someone I'd just been in a fight with. I think it was the gorgeous view that did it. <laughs> uh, we really shared a moment. Come on, let's go check it out. Carry you out of here. Easy does it. And here we are. See? It wasn't so bad, now was it? And what about this view? Gorgeous. So this is what death is like. Didn't expect it to be so sudden. Come and claim me, sweet death. But first, let this evening sun wash clean my imperfect soul. Hey, now don't go dying on me, Bernadetta. It's just the sun. Huh? What? Where am I? Oh, it's pretty. Such a lovely view. Hunting? Really? There's no way I can do this. Goddess, why couldn't I have stayed in today? Bernadetta. Is this a trouble you are having? I heard that the duty to hunt is yours today. The, the duties all got assigned while I was holed up in my room. Do not be worrying. I can show you the way to hunt well. Oh, um, okay then. When you see a beast, you are thinking of it as an enemy. That is how prey thinks. You must think of the beasts as food. That is how the hunter thinks. So, it's not an enemy, it's food. But, um, how is it food when it's still alive? You pick the vegetables from the field. Those have life too. It is the same. You take a blade in your hand and take the lives of the vegetables. You cut their stalks and harvest without mercy. They do not scream, but you are still their killer. K killer Fruit ripens and falls to the ground. The seeds sprout and a new life is born. That is life's cycle. It has cruelty, yes, but you must end life to eat. You must be killing to be living. Maybe, but I don't know if I want to be some... some kind of vegetable murderer. It is the same for rabbits, deer, pheasants. The only difference being that they cannot cry out. You must do what you must do to be living in this world. It is your task task yes just a task a completely mindless task feel it there in the grass prey is moving just like a vegetable in the wind give it an arrow just like you would give a vegetable a blade it is just your task uh right that makes sense it's just like cutting a stem you are now a hunter 
you have learned how to hunt. I am? I have? Oh, good! What a relief! You have understanding now, I can tell. Great! Leave it to me! I'll hunt down my prey just like their vegetables! I have belief in you. Aw, thanks, Petra! I can do this! Make way for Huntmaster Bernie! Have luck, Bernie. Here, I patched up the clothes you gave me. Hey, thanks. You've helped me a lot lately. I feel like I should be doing this stuff myself. But ever since you patched up my sleeve, I've been really interested in your craft. Craft? Uh, you mean my embroidery? Yeah. When I saw what you were doing, I thought, what the heck is that? But it turned out to be a nice touch, once I was actually wearing it. Practical, too. When you're embroidering, you patch up the torn parts with new cloth, right? And that strengthens it, so the same part won't break as easily next time. <sighs> I'm glad you like it. At first, I felt like you thought it was stupid. I was worried you secretly hated me or something. It made me pretty scared to show you my stitching. <laughs> Sorry. I should have told you I liked it. Thanks, Bernadetta. I'm glad I asked for your help. Oh, um, it's nothing. What'd you make this time? A hornet, huh? You do like the scary critters, don't you? It zips out from the trees and strikes! Just like you! I sting like a hornet, do I? Actually, I like that. You know, you want to be more confident. Well, what? You're good enough at sewing that you can make a living out of it. You should take pride in that. Oh, no, 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 no! I could never do that! Trust me, I'm completely useless. That's not true at all. You've been a great help. Maybe I'm a better fighter, but I've got nowhere near the same skill at sewing. We can help each other. Isn't that what friends do? Friends? We're friends? Hey, come on. I know you're not the most confident, but this is getting silly. Of course we're friends. I completely trust you. <laughs> Leone? Yeah? Get your clothes torn up as much as you want. I'll always be here to patch them right up. <laughs> right, for sure. But I wasn't just talking about embroidery, you know. Felix, my goodness, I swear you're always training. Such a hard worker. So strong. Hello? Felix? What? You can hear me. That's good. I was worried maybe your ears didn't work. What do you want? Oh, nothing. Nothing in particular, I mean. But now that I'm here, and now that you've asked, when you finished up, do you think you'd like to join me in the dining hall for something sweet? I'll pass. I don't like sweets. Also, you're a nuisance. Stay away from me. That's not a very nice way to talk to a classmate. Anyway, you sound like you're shooing away a stray cat. Shh, shut up. I am not a stray cat, Felix, and I am not leaving until you take a moment to chat with me. Ah, <sighs> you are a pest. Fine, do what you will. Oh, you better believe I am going to keep doing exactly what I will. <laughs> Huh? Hmm, maybe instead of a sweet treat, we can get something spicy. Would you like that? I've heard the dining hall is serving a dish with some western spices in it. Hmm, does that sound good, Felix? Would you like something spicy instead of sweet? You're distracting me. When I am hungry, I will eat alone. Stop squawking at me. <gasps> well, since you asked so nicely, I'll leave you in peace. Goodbye, Felix. Finally. <sighs> hmm. 
This is boring. Mind if I sleep? You know I won't care. Night watch or not, it's still just for training purposes. Though, you'd likely get in trouble if someone sees you catching disease. You wouldn't wake me if someone was here? Fine then, I won't sleep. Your call. You're being so quiet, Yuri Bird. Say something. I don't always fill the void with my voice, you know. Sometimes it's pleasant to just enjoy the quiet and stargaze. No thanks. Stargazing is a waste of time. The stars don't even stay put all year. Those jerks. See that one? That star is home to the goddess. Yeah. Watching over us from afar. Hmm. That's called the Blue Sea Star. But it doesn't look blue. At all, really. Wait, no, hang on. Maybe it wasn't that one. But that big one over there, that's it. Isn't it? You don't know the first thing about stars, do you? No one ever taught you? Never, no. Well, the Blue Sea Star is really big. It stands out. Sometimes you can't see it at all. But other times, it's the brightest thing in the sky. Interesting. So then, which star was I pointing out just now? You might have to point it out again. Which constellation were you looking at? Let's see... Uh, it looks a bit like a cat. And then, no, no, that's not right. Maybe more like a fish? Or a fishing rod? <laughs> what? I'm serious. See, those stars there are forming a shape that looks very much like a fishing rod. <laughs> okay, sorry. But that looks nothing like a fishing rod. Or a cat. I'm surprised you know so little about stars. I thought you knew everything. Who do you think I am? The goddess herself? There is plenty I don't know. But I'm always aiming to learn more. I'm uncomfortable not knowing things. So, come on then, Happy. Teach me about the stars. That'll be a pain for both of us. As painful as sitting here idling? It's not like you're going to sleep at this point. Clearly you know quite a bit about them. Teach me. Fine, fine. Look up there, to the north. Your other north. See that star? That's called the king's right hand. Oh, Constance. Hey, um, sure is sunny out. Huh? Yeah. Good day to you, Balthus. You seem to be enjoying your freedom. I must admit, I'm jealous. Right, uh, so yeah, the weather's nice. <laughs> I gotta be going now. Of course. What profit is there for one so exalted to spend time alongside one so common as me? Worry not. You needn't suffer me any longer. I shall see myself off. Come on, don't be like that. You know I get uncomfortable at times like this. I'm trying, really. You matter, so stick around, yeah? Let's chat. It'll be great. You needn't take pity on me out of the sense of obligation that your status demands. For you, the nobility that you abandoned was a shackle on your true self, which is now freed. No need to converse with me any longer, putting yourself out on my behalf. What a mouthful you just unloaded on me. Not sure what you mean by that nobility stuff, though. Sure, I walked out on leading a noble house, but how do you imagine that's related to this chat of ours? I already admitted I'm no good with stuff like this, but I don't think I'm putting myself out or whatever. My apologies. The misunderstanding was entirely my own. As I suspected from the start, I am unfit to serve as your conversational partner. Ah, that's enough! Stop talking that way and twisting everything I say! Just spit it out and tell me something real. You hate my guts, yeah? Huh, this is novel. But doesn't this scene usually play out in reverse? Oh, sorry. Guess I raised my voice there. But what do you mean by that reverse dig? Well, it's usually her yelling at you while you try to deflect. 
It's rare to see you lose your cool while she stays so calm. But different people get along differently on different days, I suppose. Anyhow, I'll let you get back to it. Ouch, he has a point. I lost myself for a moment there. To think that I have ever raised my voice at you. He seems to think we're real pals. Honestly, whether rain or shine, I don't think a day's gone by without you treating me poorly. Oh, what a thing to say. I could never go so far as to insult one with your lineage. Ha, <laughs> you're a funny one, pal. A real hoot. The idea that I could be amusing is funnier than any jest I may have uttered. <laughs> up to me, hopped in my lap, and scarfed it all down in one bite. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I was looking forward to that sandwich all morning, and then she scurried off like nothing happened. <sighs> ah. hmm. All right, then. What do you feel like doing today? Why do you sigh like that? It's not a problem, is it? I could tell you were holding back a real monstrous sigh yourself. Figured I'd get one out for the both of us. Felt great. Oh, I see. Must be nice, sighing whenever you feel so inclined. Oh, why not try taking a deep breath whenever you feel a sigh coming on? Trick yourself out of it. I tried that once. It went okay at first, but then I had to exhale. Right. Guess they're too similar for that to work. Does that mean yawning is a no-go, too? I'm pretty bored right now, so maybe we'll find out. But I don't yawn very often, to be honest. Because you sleep when the sun goes down and wake when it rises, yeah? Yep, that's been my routine for a while now. It's easier than contending with a full day of boring stuff. Come on, everything has its quirks. I don't think I'd call anything in this wild world boring. Really? Because you don't seem to take much interest in your own future. <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? We really aren't all that different, you know. I'd wager you haven't given too much thought to tomorrow either. Quiet. Don't pretend you can see through me. This pointless chatter has made me even hungrier than I already was. I'm off to the dining hall. Just wanted the gal to relax for a change. <sighs> She's as prickly as ever.